network defenders face many different challenges. Anytime they're trying to protect their enterprise, sometimes it's internally imposed security constraints, the constantly changing environment, constantly evolving threats, lack of skilled workers, and then an ever-expanding knowledge gap. A lot of the studies that are out there talk about the total cost of breaches. One of the studies mentioned says, you know, total cost of breaches in 2022 was 4.35 million. The average cost for each breach with breaches in the healthcare industry, you know, running around 10 million. Breaches in the U.S. tend to be more expensive because a lot of our rules and a lot of the regulations that are out there. Studies show that it takes an average of 277 days for security teams to identify and contain a data breach. So anything we can do to cut down the detection time and the reaction time is essential. In 2022 alone, ethical hackers were able to discover over 65,000 vulnerabilities, which was up 21% from 2021. So threat hunters, analysts, we're constantly seeking out the knowns and the unknowns from all of our traffic. So I'm referencing a decision risk framework. It talks about four quadrants. First quadrants, known knowns. These are the events where the IOCs, the TTPs, we're, they're known. We know what the patterns are. We're spotting the patterns and signatures. We can use a lot of automated detections and decision trees to spot all of this. And it's normally stuff we can just hand off to the low level analysts or the beginners to handle. They're easy to spot, easy to alert. Next quadrant is going to be the known unknowns. These are the events where we see patterns or activity, but we don't understand what we're seeing. Some of them are from automated detection. Some of them we can't tell if they're false positive or real. Again, back to that constantly changing environment. And those become issues that normally get ex escalated to the next level analyst to deal with, to find out is something really happening, what's going on. The third quadrant down is the unknown knowns. So this is where threat hunting kind of really starts. Most platforms don't accurately categorize or identify events in the, this quadrant. And most analysts, especially beginning analysts, are not going to see un anything unusual in this traffic because it appears normal. And analysts and threat hunters may spend a lot of time in this realm trying to discern the truth. Automated detections and decision trees will give you some tip offs in this area, but they may have missed this activity because usually it's down in the noise. And the last realm in this is going to be the unknown unknowns. So this is where threat hunters are earning their money. We're sifting through everything. We're looking for new patterns, new threats, anything that we can find that's gonna tip us off to what's really going on. We want to know about the stuff that we don't know because we know it's always going on or we assume that trying to find those puzzle pieces and put them together, constantly rotating your perspective, looking at the data, looking at it from different angles, tilting it, seeing, you know, is there anything that comes out? Is there anything that we didn't know about? Looking for those unknown events, looking at metadata, NetFlow, anything that we can to spot anything that's been going on or may have been going on for a while, looking for unusual connection pairs, anomalous behavior, abnormal logins or times, activity, anything. I mean, it's moving into the true matrix stuff where you're looking at the patterns and seeing that flow and seeing you know those resolve into images. So one of the best strategies that we propose is talking about creating custom rules, tuning alerts, automating detections, anything that you can do to reduce that response time. Take your knowledge, design the defenses for your situation, for your enterprise, and customize it based on your architecture, based on what is critical to you in your environment and your data, and use all of that customization to shorten the reaction time for your analysts. Anything that you can do to make them better, faster, and more efficient. We want to prevent the incidents. We want to prevent the reconnaissance. We want to see what's going on. And if you can't prevent it, at least detect them as fast as possible. So you've got to get the information in front of your in, in front of your analysts and your information and decision makers as fast as possible. You know what's critical in your environment. You know where your risks are. You're one of the only ones that can do that in most cases. Our platform, Fidelis Elevate, was designed as a fully integrated suite of network endpoint deception technologies trying to combine all of those different pieces. We want to detect the attacks. We automatically respond to threats. 
all of that, trying to build that INW, the indications of warning, and expose those TTPs. We want to prevent or identify attacks and give the analyst real-time information, the connection, forensic information, the objects to fully investigate all the events. So our active threat framework was designed to give your organization a method to deal with that in a proactive manner, a proactive approach to identify those sophisticated unknown threats, threats that have evaded the other measures, all the stuff that you're doing, because research has shown that the dwell time on a lot of those attacks is in months, not in days or in weeks. Fidelis is using retrospective discovery. As new threats are discovered, identified, we take that intelligence and we're publishing those using that historic data and looking for all of that information. You've got to reevaluate daily what's going on with those IOCs to detect if previously unidentified threats are lurking in your systems. We're using artifact discovery, machine learning, anomaly models. All of those are built in. They're powerful tools. They're used to identify unusual outlier behaviors, things that are in your systems that you might not have known about. We want to point out those anomalies. Things that happen over and over on a regular basis across assets are not interesting, but we're looking for those new and unique behaviors, identifying artifacts to help us guide where the threat hunters can focus their time better. We're doing activity discovery, identifying patterns, patterns of behavior, anything that's critical that we can look for to enhance that proactive security posture. Units of activity may not seem suspicious, but once you start correlating that and building that, those benign activity patterns can turn into something real and the bigger patterns can emerge and help the threat hunters focus and find and stop attacks. So effective threat hunting reduces the time from intrusions to detections, reduces the amount of damage that the malicious actors can do. It helps find and address all of those known and unknown artifacts hiding in your environment and uncover the dangers lurking there. Today, we're gonna to discuss new and exciting capabilities from Fidelis, which improve your analyst detections while operating in all four of those realms in near real time, and not only with alerts, but the forensics data and the objects which triggered those alerts. As we mentioned before, many organizations do not have teams with the depth of experience required to sift through all this data. Inexperienced threat hunters may not find the things that are not normal out of normal for their organization, and that's the reason why active threats were created. One example, command and control. And say it happens every 24 hours. Viewing the alerts, you see one an alert once a day uh, may not seem overly suspicious, but when repeated every day at the same time and correlated into an active threat, as we'll see in a little bit, this activity might jump out and become more obvious what is happening when you when viewed in uh, the context of an active threat. So let's run through the example shown here in the slide. We can see during the initial execution of the correlation engine, alerts are found for asset one and asset two that match our models. At this time, we start tracking these model hits for each asset, but have not generated any threats yet. The assets have become interesting, but not necessarily anything to be investigated. Now, upon the execution of the next uh, cycle of the correlation engine, another alert is found, which matches a model for asset two and is in a different stage than we're already tracking from that previous execution. Since this meets our criteria for an active threat, where a model has to hit into two stages, we now create an active threat for asset two. So in the example above, in the third correlation engine execution, an alert's matched against a model in a stage that has not yet been tracked for asset one, and an active threat's created now for asset one. During the same cycle, another alert is found, which matches models for asset two and is added to the existing threat for model two to continue building that threat storyline. So our recommendations to neutralize threats faster is develop a proactive threat hunting strategy. Define your objectives with scope and resources so you can align your strategy with your organization's overall cybersecurity goals. Enhance visibility into your environment. Invest in tools and technologies that provide comprehensive visibility into your network and data. 
use advanced analytics, leverage advanced analytic techniques such as machine learning and behavioral analysis to identify unknown threats and uncover hidden patterns as they expose gaps within your network and learn and adapt. Stay updated on the latest threat landscape, new attack techniques and emerging technologies so you can adapt your defenses and refine your threat hunting techniques.